Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to see how we can automate API testing with Kits. Kits also supports API testing along with browser testing. So we are in our project and if I go into any of our uh, previously created reusables, for example, the login, you would see in the object name, in addition to the actual web elements, there are uh, there is a possibility of having four different types of operations. So if I double click on the object name, I see there is a concept called browser. This is usually related to browser testing. Execute, we have used this in our um, test cases. So if I go to my test case, you see execute. Execute is used for executing a reusable. So browser execute app. App is used for um, uh, opening up a mobile application and testing it. Uh, we're going to see that in a different series. Uh, we have the option of performing database testing. So database and then web service. This is the uh, op operation which is going to help us perform some API testing. So let's see this in action. What I will do is I will create a new scenario and I would call it um, my API scenario. And underneath that scenario, I'm going to create a test case. I'm going to name it. Um, maybe first I would try to perform a post operation. So in in a in a rest api world uh, the common api verbs are post get delete put patch uh, these are different operations that we usually perform uh, on an api on an api uh, post is usually uh, to create a content uh, in the database um, so we're going to perform all these operations on a dummy uh, API uh, application uh, that we have available on the internet. This is the reqres.in, regress.in. This helps us uh, uh, to practice our test automation uh, uh, for APIs by providing us certain uh, dummy APIs. Uh, so what we will do is we are going to use this application. I'm going to provide the link of both this application as well as the, the Swag Labs application that I was using for uh, the web uh, automation in, in the description section. So first, we are going to perform the post operation. Post operation is nothing but um, a creation process. So what it essentially tells us is if we pass this payload, so the data in an API is called a payload. So if we pass this payload to um, this endpoint, um, then we would get a response like this. And we would also be able to validate whether the response code is OK or not. So uh, what I would do is uh, I will go to kits. And the first thing that I would do is I'm going to select web service and I'm going to set the endpoint. So you're going to type set endpoint. Okay. So what it tells us is the endpoint is this. If I click on this one, this actually gives me the endpoint uh, regress.in slash API slash users. I'm going to copy this. Let's go back and let's go back to post. So this is the endpoint. I'm going to come to kits and I'm going to mouse hover on the input column. It asks me to open the editor. I'm going to open up the editor. This is something that we are seeing for the first time. We haven't seen this uh, editor opening up in the browser automation section, but in the APIs, you would have uh, a big payloads. You would have uh, quite long endpoints. So it's always handy to do it in an editor instead of this kind of a cell. Okay, so you just uh, enter the endpoint and then you press escape to close the editor. Uh, so we have performed the first operation, which is uh, setting the endpoint. Then what we will do is we are going to go back and we are going to uh, copy the payload that we want to 
uh, you know post so copy this uh, so come back web service and this time I'm going to select something called post so we have the option of rest uh, API testing and soap API testing I'm going to select a rest request because this is a, a rest endpoint it's a rest API and again uh, mouse click on this one or uh, mouse hover that is also okay it opens up the editor option so this is even bigger as I was explaining some of the payloads can be very big here you just paste your uh, payload and then uh, click on escape uh, one interesting thing to note here is that uh, this understands that whatever whatever you have pasted is a JSON so it automatically color codes your JSON okay so we have set the endpoint now we are going to post the request uh, what we also want to do is we want to validate the response whether the response is 201 or not so I'm going to select web service um, and we have quite a few uh, actions that we can perform specific to web service so as soon as you select web service the options that you will get in the action column are only going to be related to web service um, we have an option uh, called assert response code so you're going to select that and we are going to set the value as 201 because that's the response that we are supposed to get and this is the response body that uh, that will be uh, returned as soon as we uh, post this so let's see what we can do with the response body so web service and we can say store response body in a data sheet that is possible we can store the entire response body in a data sheet uh, we can also do something like store json element in a data data sheet or we can store json element now only store json element would store it in a variable and store json element in a data sheet means it will store it in a data sheet quite simple so we are going to store this um, json element in a data sheet but uh, you know we need to first identify which json element from the response body we actually want to store so i'm going to first select this action it immediately tells me that I need an input and I need a condition so I will tell you what these two requirements are so I'm going to store a JSON element from my response body into a data sheet so first I need to create a data sheet so I'll be in the test environment I will create a data sheet say by the name of um, API and then i would say um, okay now before we name the column let's identify which json element we want to store so name name is something that is being returned uh, from the input so uh, we already have a name that is going into the input so we, there is no point in storing this name uh, there is no point in storing the job as well but it is going to be handy to store the id and uh, the created at uh, uh, element right so what we will do is um, we are going to anyways create the name column because we want to also parameterize this in a while we'll see it in a while name job um, let's create two more columns one is the id and the other one is created at yeah okay so name and job we are going to use these later on id and created at these are the two elements that we want to store from the response body so uh, let's first store the id so the way to do this is just drag and drop this uh, this data cell here so now the input is filled so we are telling that um, whenever the id is available in the response please store it in the data sheet here but we also need to tell what is the JSON path of the ID. Now, this is very important. Uh, whenever we are going to use a REST API, uh, which has a JSON body, 
in order to identify the element, we need to provide the JSON path. If it is a SOAP uh, request response, then probably uh, it's going to use an XML, so you need to provide the X path. Right. In this case, we are going to use the uh, JSON path of the of the ID. Uh, in the description section, I'm going to uh, put down a tutorial on how to identify uh, JSON paths in case you're not aware. Uh, for this, it's fairly simple. The command is uh, $.id. That's it. It's as simple as that. Uh, because ID is directly in the root location of the primary JSON. Right, so this is done. And if I have to create one more, um, I would say web service, uh, the same action store JSON element in the data sheet. I want the created at, so drag and drop. And uh, no prizes for guessing. <laughs> this would be dollar dot, let me pick up the actual name created at created at okay that's it so um, we have created a, a simple test case where we are going to uh, post a request to a particular endpoint which will create um, uh, let's say a, a content uh, a user probably with a name and a job it will automatically generate an ID which we want to store in our data sheet because there is a possibility that we might want to use this ID at a later point in time for some other operation. This is very important because we can use this ID uh, stored in this data sheet for a subsequent API call uh, for orchestrated API calls, or we can even use it in a web uh, action uh, in a browser as well. Okay, so um, so uh, let's also make use of these two uh, data sheets uh, or these two data cells. Actually, how to use this now in the uh, in the payload? Uh, sorry, this is not the payload. This is the endpoint. This is the payload. In the payload, we had uh, hard-coded the name and the job. So what we will do is um, we will parameterize this and we will ask this editor to pick, pick up the data from the data sheet. The way to do that is to uh, remove this, press control plus space. Now control plus space will open up the list of all possible uh, uh, sections from where you can pick up the data. In our previous test cases, if you remember, uh, we had created a user-defined variable called password. So it is also saying you can pick it up from the user-defined variable. And it also lists down the data sheets along with the column names that are available um, from where we can pick up the data. But we are going to pick up the data from API name. So just double click on this and it gets uh, automatically refactored. Same thing for the job. I'm going to remove this and I'm going to say uh, API and job. So now my payload is parameterized. There is nothing hard coded in the payload. I'm going to save this and um, I'm going to say a name, uh, give a name like uh, like Skywalker and the job would be commander. Yeah, that's it. This is as simple as that. So my post uh, test case is ready. Uh, it's going to assert the, uh, the, the, the status and it's going to store two uh, important parameters. In order to run this, I'm going to right click on this one. I'm going to select no browser because an API doesn't require any browser. And let's just give it a shot. So you see uh, the execution got completed. Um, practically no time. And that's how it's supposed to be. Um, if I expand this, I see that um, it, it says that the assertion is indeed OK. So it has given us a pass. Uh, and it has stored the ID 
836 and it has also stored the created at time uh, in the in the data sheet so let's actually see that in the data sheet so just refresh this you see 836 is uh, stored in the id and the created at time okay so that's pretty cool so this is how we can set up uh, an api test uh, very quickly in kit and we can also parameterize the different uh, components uh, in our payload we will also quickly create a, a get and a delete test case uh, so what i can do is just copy this one and uh, paste it so i am just simply copying a test case um, and this one is a get request so what i can do is i need to change the endpoint let's go back to the application and see what we have if i want to get a single user for example the um the endpoint would be like this so that's what i'm going to do so this two is actually the id of the user right uh, so i'm going to copy this um, i'm going to put it in the endpoint section this too is something that i uh, don't like as hard coded in my endpoint because i would want to get the id or the details of any user that is there in my database so it could be number one two three four five so we are going to parameterize this so we have already parameterized payload now we're going to also parameterize a certain component in the endpoint we're going to see it in a while now uh, this is not going to be a post request this is going to be a rest request so just uh, delete this and we're going to say get rest request uh the input turns red because it's not expecting any input for a get request we're going to assert the response code but it's going to be 200 for get yeah 200 for get it's not 201 201 is usually for creations so for post and what do we get um oh sorry this is for page so for single user uh, yeah, okay, this is going to be uh, nice, yeah. Um, the response that we get is this, right? So we would want to store the email address of the user that I'm going to pass, right? In this case, if the ID is uh, two, the email address is of Janet Weaver. Um, let's also see what if we change the id to three and that would be emma wong okay so let's go back and let's go back to the single user get uh, in kits what we have to do is we have to, we want to store the email id all right so let's just uh, uh, create a, a data sheet okay let me rename the okay let me rename the first one to uh, post oh, sorry. post uh, and if you see it automatically refactors this uh, in the in the data sheet now this one will be get so and the data will be and the id that i want to pass and the email that i want to fetch yeah so the id that i want to pass and the email that i want to fetch uh, if i want to uh, parameterize this i have to open up the editor the same process remove the part that i want to parameterize control space bar and then it says uh, um, you know the data sheet followed by the column name i'm going to select get id so this is the part that is that is variableized that is going to part from uh, pass from the data sheet 
Okay, so that's done. And now the same action is going to uh, be performed at line number four, store JSON element in the data sheet. And we don't want to store the ID because that is what we're going to pass. We want to store the email. So drag and drop uh, the data sheet uh, cell, a cell. And then we have to pass the, uh, uh, the uh, JSON path. Number five is not required because we are only going to store one element that is email. Now in this case, the, uh, the JSON path would look something like data and then underneath data, we have email, right? So it's going to be something like this dollar dot data dot email. Quite simple. If there were multiple data uh, uh, segments, then we would have probably had to give like a data uh, and then within square brackets, a zero or a one or a two, depending upon which data element we want to uh, zero down to. But in this case, it's as simple as dollar data email. Okay, now we are ready to fire this test case, um, but we provide uh, the value three and the email that we are expecting is uh, Emma Wong. So right click, no browser, let's fire this. We open this up and we see Emma Wong is stored in the data sheet. Let's go back and refresh and we see Emma Wong is stored in the data sheet. Yeah. So it's fairly simple the way we would want to use this. Um, um, now, if I want to show you a, a delete request, for example, then uh, all I need to do is just uh, copy this um, get request, paste it, and delete. So we have created a new test case by simply copying one of our previous test cases because we know that most of our steps are going to remain the same. Yeah. So uh, for delete, what we will do is we go back to the application and we have a delete operation as well. And then if we pass the ID to the endpoint, the response is going to be two not four. That's uh, that's as simple as that. So what we will uh, do is for delete, um, we're going to create another data sheet. Um, let's name it delete. We're going to pass the ID. Yeah, and in the endpoint, we are going to say, hey, not from the get ID, but from the delete ID. Yeah, that's done. We are going to leave. OK, now we need to change the request. So we're going to say delete rest request. That's also cool. Uh, the response code, we are going to leave the response code as is. That is 200. We are supposed to get 204, uh, which is a correct response. But we will uh, get. Uh, we are expecting a response code of 200. This is an intentional failure that I'm injecting just to see how, how the tool behaves or detects this properly or not. And we are not storing anything here, so I'm just going to delete uh, this line. And uh, we don't need this additional column, so I'm going to delete this column. And we're going to pass the ID as 2. And let's see how it works. Save the project. Run. OK, so now my test case has failed as expected. If I open this up, uh, it says that the, re uh, the status code is 204, but should be 200. Because uh, 204 is what it is getting from the uh, endpoint, from the API server. But we are saying that, hey, please check whether it is 200 or not. Uh, and hence, it throws us a failure. So that's also pretty neatly done. So we have covered some of the 
most basic verbs uh, that are used in APIs. Uh, this is how you can use uh, the API uh, feature to not just test APIs, but also even generate data using APIs for your uh, browser testing as well, because you can use APIs and browser in conjunction for your um, test automation. That brings us to the end of this video. In the next video, we will learn about iteration, sub-iterations, and uh, looping.